The Sonic.exe 3.0 Restored mod just dropped, and this mod basically has all the characters that were supposed to be in the original mod, even the ones that were cancelled or scrapped for the most part. In this video, I want to go over all the characters, give you some facts about them and their backstories, of course. And a fair warning, this video is probably going to be a little bit dark, and it's definitely going to be a longer one because, as you've seen, this mod is over two hours long. Let's start out with talking about a character named Chaotic. Now, even though Chaotic looks like Knuckles, he's definitely not him. It seems that Chaotic was inspired from the Wachinia glitch that originated from a Sega game called Knuckles Chaotic. Also notable is that Chaotix only has one eye. Unlike Knuckles, he doesn't have the crescent on his chest and his color scheme is obviously way brighter and lighter than Knuckles. Chaotix's backstory goes like this. Chaotic is the leftover remnants of a broken data and code that was left for Tails in the Knuckles Chaotic game. He is a sentient character that only wishes to become whole again and he will do that by any means necessary because he basically wants to be back to his full glory. The scariest thing about him is that he's unstable and reckless and he even has a second form called his beast form. If Chaotic believes that he's found a Mobian that has his missing data, he'll go into this beast form. Now his beast form is about 5'11", which towers over most Mobians because they're about 3 feet tall. And to make matters worse, if he unalives any of these Mobians, he can bring them back as his undead servants, very similar to what Sonic.exe can do. Some fun facts about Chaotic is that he's about the same level of power as Fatal Error, which means that he's actually pretty strong. He and Curse Sonic are actually best friends, and Chaotic is also considered to be pansexual. Next we have Xtarian, which real name is actually Jonathan Fitzgerald Michaels. Now X is actually based on the Sega Saturn game titled Sonic Jam. He's basically a lost spirit that has been trapped within a copy of the Sonic Jam's game and can't seem to find peace. His backstory goes like this. Jonathan was a young man when he got his position at the Sega of America. He loved his job and his co-workers up until about 1996 when Sega of Japan requested Sega of America send workers to help out with an upcoming game. Now Jonathan actually volunteered to help but this turned out to be one of the worst mistakes of his life. He didn't understand that the grind culture in Japan is even worse than it is here in America. He had to work day and night on several projects which led him to having a seizure, which actually turned out to be fatal. Instead of ending up in the afterlife though, Jonathan actually found himself trapped in this kind of video game purgatory that he actually helped create. He was trapped in the game disc for years until his now adult daughter found a box full of her father's belongings, the disc being one of them. And the good news is that once the disc is in Jonathan's daughter's hands, he seems to find some type of peace and is able to move on to the afterlife. Now a fun fact about X is that he wasn't just sitting in this purgatory alone apparently. It seems that he's actually in a polyamorous relationship with Curse Sonic and two other characters that are not a part of the Sonic mod. So at least we can say that the guy wasn't bored. The next character on our list is going to be Requital aka Requital Tales and he was actually created by Com Gaming and his backstory is actually pretty short but dark. This version of Tails is basically obsessed with Sonic and anybody who even resembles Sonic or tries to act like Sonic, he'll basically go out of his way to try to unalive those people. Now the scary part here is that if you notice, Boyfriend and Pico both look like Sonic characters in this particular song. So if they don't work together here, Tails is going to be able to unalive both of them. A fun fact, this is one of the few times that we get to see Boyfriend and Pico actually battling together. The only other examples I can think of is the Vivian Plague mod where Girlfriend gets corrupted and Pico and Boyfriend have to battle against her. And of course for Pico Day, the familiar encounter mod when it was Boyfriend and Pico versus Tank Man. Let me know if you know any other mods where Pico and Boyfriend team up. The next character on our list is Slash and this is another original EXE character that was created by Mar Starbro. And now there isn't a whole lot known about this character, but what I find interesting is that he does have four arms, kind of like Fatal Error. And there's one quote that was revealed from him where he basically says, let's see who really is a god. I thought this was interesting because we know that Sonic.exe always says that he is god. So it makes me wonder if this character is meant to contend or actually fight against Sonic.exe at some point. The next character on our list is going to be Hog slash Scorch and this character is actually an EXE that was created by Jack Gore and he's basically supposed to be a bootleg copy of Sonic. Some interesting facts about Hog is that he doesn't actually have a creepy pasta in which he comes from. He was an EXE that was made specifically for Friday Night Funkin'. Now the most interesting thing about Hog and Scorch is that technically they are different characters but they share the same body. The most simple way I can wrap my mind around this is thinking about the Banner and the Hulk. They are obviously different characters, but they both reside in the same body. And while Hog is kind of cute sitting at only three feet tall, Scorch looks like a monstrous werewolf standing at 13 feet tall, meaning that this character is huge. 
The next character on our list to talk about is going to be Curse. Now, the first thing to note is that Curse is technically Sonic the Hedgehog. And in his backstory, he lived a pretty normal life just like the regular Sonic. And that is until one day he got caught in a landslide. Sonic was able to survive the landslide, but one of his legs was pretty much ruined. The damage was so bad that Sonic could never be able to run at the same speed that he did before, and if he would even attempt that type of speed, he would basically make it to where he could never use his leg again, meaning that he can't even walk. And I think this may be part of the reason that we see Curse with the bandages around his legs. At first I thought he was supposed to be like Boom Sonic, but now that I know the backstory, it makes a lot more sense. To make matters worse, Knuckles was with him when this landslide happened and Knuckles did not make it out alive. Once the public and even some of Sonic's friends found out about this, they blamed Sonic for the death of Knuckles. The most surprising of these people was Tails because Tails was always like Sonic's right hand man. But Tails starts to harass Sonic, bully Sonic, and even stalk Sonic so that he will never forget that he's the reason that Knuckles is no longer alive. And just to make it clear, it wasn't Sonic's fault that the landslide happened, so obviously it wasn't his fault that Knuckles is not alive. Another surprising fact about this is that Sonic finds a unlikely ally in this universe in Dr. Eggman. Seeing that Sonic is getting so much hate, Dr. Eggman actually retires from being a criminal and decides to use the rest of his life and his money to help Sonic live more comfortably. He basically uses all his badniks and metal Sonic to help make sure that Sonic is safe and he also sends them out to kind of take Sonic's place and help out society as a whole, since now obviously Sonic can't be the hero that he was. Now to make matters even worse, at this point Sonic is inflicted with something called the Curse of X. And what this curse basically does is unalives people that are close to Sonic. Now Sonic tries to hide away from the world living with his friend Sally and of course being protected by Dr. Robotnik. But eventually the curse catches up to him and ends up taking the life of Sally. Which of course was traumatizing to Sonic because Sally was one of his best friends. The next person to be taken out after that of course was Dr. Eggman which was another blow because this man basically changed his whole life in his evil ways to try to help Sonic in his time of need. In the end, Metal Sonic and Curse were able to get together and get Dr. Eggman's portal gun to open up a multi-dimensional portal that Sonic could go into to try to escape all the people that hated him and possibly the Curse. The sad part here though is that it seems that no matter where he goes, this Curse is now a part of him. Which makes sense considering that his name is Curse. One thing that I find kind of inspiring about Curse though is that even though he has this horrific life, he is still very friendly and he's always kind of a ray of sunshine to other people, especially when you compare him to any other EXE character. The next character on our list is going to be Sonic Chu, and this character is actually a fan-made webcomic created by a person named Christine Weston Chandler. Now while I don't know a whole lot about this webcomic, I know that some characters that we're familiar with like Amy, Knuckles, and Shadow the Hedgehog are in this webcomic, and Sonic and Amy are still kind of a couple. And it seems that the whole premise here is that these characters are helping Chris basically fight against like an evil mall cop, a witch, and some internet trolls. Now I wish I can tell you which Pokemon each character is supposed to be, because it's obvious that Sonic 2 is Sonic plus Pikachu. And the rest of the characters are kind of hard to tell, and that's because the artwork isn't necessarily top tier, but I don't think it's supposed to be, I think it's just something that somebody's doing for fun. The next character on our list is going to be Santanos. And my Spanish speaking people can probably help me out here, but I'm pretty sure his name translates out to Satan. And if that wasn't enough, he literally has a pentagram on his stomach. And we all know that the pentagram has been connected with things of demonic natures for a long time, even if that's not the original purpose of it. Something else that I find interesting about this character is that he's very reminiscent of Sonic.exe. But one notable difference is what he does with his eyes. In his right pose, up pose, down pose, you see these black tendrils start to go around his eyes. And I think that is an awesome little detail there. And it's just creepy as heck. The next character on our list is Seeker History Tales, and his backstory goes like this. Basically, back in the day, Sonic was doing his hero thing, and he was even picked up by Sega as like a sponsored figure. But over time, Sega started to notice that he started to decline in popularity, or that he just wasn't growing as fast as they wanted him to, so they decided to give him a sidekick, which ended up being Tails. Now, if you listen to Amy tell it, Tails was always just kind of hovering around Sonic, and he was never really able to leave him alone, almost as if he was obsessed with him. This wasn't such a big deal at first and most people thought that it was just an innocent little thing considering that Tails is supposed to be Sonic's best friend but then once Knuckles dies people start to believe that maybe Tails has something to do with it. 
Basically, before this, Knuckles and Sonic had kind of put aside their differences and became like a dynamic duo, almost best friends, some would argue. Once their relationship reached this level, Knuckle mysteriously died due to his phone battery blowing up and basically blowing up his head. And this is when people start to suspect that Tails may have had something to do with it. Shadow fell into the same boat as Knuckles. Basically, once him and Sonic started getting close, he mysteriously died as well. But his cause of death was apparently his malfunctioning boots. And when Sonic finds Shadow's body, all he actually finds is one leg that was blown off. Now, it comes to light later that Tails definitely is the murderer here, and the reason that he gives is because these people weren't actually Sonic's friends, but imposters that were only out to do him no good. Sonic goes on to let Tails know that they are not best friends, and the response was golden. Tails basically tells him that obviously this is not the real Sonic because Tails and Sonic are best friends. So if we're not best friends, you must not be the real Sonic. And then he tries to kill Sonic. The next character on our list is called Devoid, AKA Devoid Sonic. And he is an alternate version of Sonic that wears a mask to hide his face, and here's why. The Void story takes place during the final events of Sonic CD. Sonic had blasted through the seven zones that made up Little Planet in an effort to stop Dr. Robotnik's latest evil plan, which involved building a huge robotic shell around the planet as well as chaining it to Earth. Sonic had made it to Robotnik's final base, which was called Metallic Madness, but unfortunately for Sonic, it was already too late. Robotnik sat there in his station mech, lifeless as a loud, maniacal laughter filled the room and also the planet in general, it seemed. It was almost like Dr. Eggman was everywhere. The reason for this is that the strange robotic shell he had built around Little Planet wasn't just for looks. It was a mechanical body fused with the planet and built to host Dr. Robotnik's mind and soul, giving him the ability to harness the full power of the Time Stones, in turn allowing him control over time and space. Sonic tried to fight back but his efforts were useless because Robotnik was basically invincible in his current state. Sonic had no other choice but to use the six time stones in his possessions which he collected on his journey to Robotnik's lair. Sonic had hoped that with the time stones he could travel back to before Dr. Robotnik had the chance to fuse with the planet. However, given the fact that Robotnik essentially was Little Planet now, this failed catastrophically. Robotnik's will over the time stones won out and Sonic was erased from time. Now Sonic woke up in a void and was in an unbearable pain, surrounded by nothing but pure darkness. He could still feel himself, he still felt alive, but at the same time, he felt empty. He could still move, so he ran as fast as he could, and suddenly, Sonic was engulfed in light, his immense speed had somehow allowed him to escape the void and warp back to his timeline. However, when he arrived, everything was wrong. The pain hadn't left, he still felt empty, but he seemed to be back in his world. The short relief of being home was quickly replaced by fear as he stumbled around Green Hill begging for help, but there was no Mobians or animals, the water evaporated and the grass was all decayed. Sonic for the first time in his life was actually terrified, but then he had a spark of hope. He spotted his companion, Tails, and notably, Tails seemed to be looking around in shock as well. Sonic cried out for Tails, begging for help, and when Tails looked to see who was speaking to him, Tails was struck with fear. His mind couldn't understand what Sonic had become. Sonic didn't know it yet, but his face was basically a void, and when Tails looked into it, his body was absorbed in the void, aka into Sonic. Tails screamed in agony as he was being absorbed, and to Sonic's absolute horror, he can still hear Tails screaming inside of him. Sonic begged and pleaded with Tails to stop screaming because it's driving him insane, but Tails cannot hear him and is simply forced to suffer for all eternity. Now over the next few years, Robotnik actually expands his power to more of the universe because no one can actually stand up to his power. But Sonic comes to understand that he is an entity that now exists outside of time's rules and this means that Robotnik can't actually control him. And he vows to make Robotnik pay for what he's done to the universe and what he's done to him. Now thanks to Tails, Sonic also figures out that if any living thing views him, they'll be absorbed into the black hole that makes up his non-existent face. Now Sonic wears the face of a destroyed Batnik as a mask so no one will ever suffer the same fate as Tails unless Sonic wills it. The sad fact about this version of Sonic is that he's always on the brink of insanity now. He's very emotionally unstable and he struggles with his own identity. And this is why he takes on the name Devoid. He can't stand to think of himself as Sonic anymore and the thoughts of his old life makes him depressed and disgusted with the new life that he has. The only piece of good news here is that no matter what happens, his one goal now is to permanently destroy Robotnik and he'll do whatever it takes to accomplish that goal. 
The next character on our list is going to be Starved Eggman, and we're going to start off with talking about his physical description. We see here that his skin is now completely red, and his head actually just looks like a red skull. His mustache has fallen off, and his mouth is always showing his teeth as if he doesn't have lips anymore. The whole purpose of this version of Eggman is basically to catch and devour Mobians, and in case you don't know what those are, they're basically the inhabitants of the Sonic Universe. So to put simply, he basically wants to eat all the animals in the Sonic Universe, whether those are the ones that can talk or the ones that cannot. His backstory goes like this. So after the events of Sonic 1, Eggman was left with an entire base of operations destroyed by Sonic the Hedgehog. As he was trying to repair what he could and clean up his base, he found a charred Flecky that had basically been burned by one of his Batnets. And if you don't know what a Flicky is, it's basically those little birds that fly around in a Sonic game. So not one of the talking creatures, it's a regular bird. When he sees the creature there burnt up, he basically starts to get curious about it. He wonders what it would taste like, and he takes a little bite of it. And from that moment, something clicked in Dr. Eggman to now he wants to eat all the animals in this universe. It goes so far to where he even starts to build Batnets, which are his little robots, to actually cook these creatures so that he can eat them right then and there. Now, interestingly enough, this is specifically why Furnace was created. We see him in this mod looking like a darker version of Metal Sonic. And in essence, just like the other robot Sonics that Eggman created, Furnace is meant to match Sonic in not only speed, but in strength as well. And in certain situations, he's even meant to exceed Sonic's speed and strength. But the main purpose of Furnace is actually much darker. He's meant to basically cook these Mobians right as Dr. Robotniks catches them so that he can eat them right on the spot. Now over time, the new diet that Dr. Eggman had actually came with a lot of consequences. This is why we see that his hair is all falling out, he has this rotting smell all over his body, and of course his skin is now red. But even with all these consequences, it still doesn't deter him from catching more Mobians. And a sad fact that a lot of people don't know about this particular story is that one of his victims is actually Amy Rose. He captures her and eats her without Sonic even knowing. What's even worse is that Dr. Robotnik also baits Sonic into getting captured as well. Eggman basically gets Sonic to agree to race against Furnace. Now, Sonic was actually faster than Furnace when he was focused on the race. But when Dr. Eggman flew up next to him, Sonic had to take that time to tease him, and this caused him to actually slow down and lose focus on his surroundings. So much so that he didn't hear Furnace flying underneath him and past him. Now, once Sonic finished gloating, he looked away from Eggman just in time to see Furnace right in front of him. Sonic didn't have time to maneuver out of the way, so he ended up running right into Furnace, which is how he actually ended up being unalived. Running into metal at that speed made a crash so loud that it could be heard for miles. Sonic definitely didn't even stand a chance of surviving that. To make matters worse, Dr. Eggman was so happy with catching Sonic that he said that he would preserve the body and only feast on pieces of him for special occasions. Even after this though, Dr. Eggman wasn't satisfied. He wanted to eat more Mobians and he had his eyes on a specific little fox. And this is where Tails actually enters the mod. Through Tails' point of view, we learn that not only Sonic and Amy are missing, but also Ray. Now for those of you that don't know, Ray is actually a flying squirrel that appeared in the Sonic the Hedgehog comics and also a couple of spinoffs that were published by Archie Comics. Funny enough, he's also a member of Chaotix and he was best friends with Mighty the Armadillo. Now since his friends are missing, Tails actually decides to go look for them because he isn't aware that they've actually been devoured. He goes to the Scrap Brain Zone to investigate only to find Sonic unalived on the floor and it looks like Eggman has already been picking away at Sonic at this point. This is when Tails decides to battle Eggman on his own, which is pretty brave if you ask me. Now some fun facts about this mod is that Tails only seems to have one tail in his mod, and a lot of people are saying it's because Furnace has actually taken that tail away from him and served it up to Eggman already. Another fact that I find interesting about this mod is that a lot of people are assuming that Starved is actually a cannibal, but that's not true. He doesn't eat humans, he only eats wildlife and Mobians. And lastly, people also think that this version of Eggman is less intelligent than his original self, but that is also not true. He still has an IQ of 300 and is more vicious than ever, which is a scary combination. The next character on our list is going to be Lord X. Now, contrary to popular belief, Lord X and Sonics.exe are not technically the same character. For what we know about Lord X thus far, he is actually an extraterrestrial being originating from the space between universes, or AKA the Void. And even though technically Lord X can take on any form that he wants, he has this weird fascination with Sonic the Hedgehog, which is why he looks like a monstrous version of Sonic. 
My theory is that this has a lot to do with Lord X's personality. He's very methodical, very intelligent, and I think he believes that if he takes on the persona of a hero, people will be more likely to trust him. And this ties in with that twisted personality that he has. He's like if you gave a very smart but demented child endless power. And in turn, he sees humans and other creatures as toys. And I mean this in a literal sense. Lord X likes to play games with his victims that are obviously rigged against them. And if they lose, Lord X will basically devour their soul and their actual bodies. I always say that Lord X is one of the scariest versions of Sonics.exe because he basically will erase you from existence, literally. Next on our list, we're gonna talk about Majin Sonic, and he's basically based off a famous Easter egg that was in the Sonic CD sound test. Even though Majin Sonic was supposed to be some type of joke, he's actually one of the more creepy versions of Sonic because he has this misshapen, smiling, human-like face and no pupils at all, making him look like something out of a straight horror story. Majin Sonic was actually placed in the game as an Easter egg by a man named Masoto Nishimura, and he was also the landscape designer and also the voice of the Sonic in the Sonic CD. Majin Sonic's face is actually supposed to be based off Masoto's face. And a lot of people believe that since Majin Sonic is in the same mod as Sonic.exe and all these other demonic versions of Sonic, that he is also a demon. But the name Majin doesn't actually mean demon or evil spirit in this sense. It's actually the nickname for Masoto. And since Masoto created Majin Sonic, he went ahead and gave him his nickname. And if you activate the Easter egg code in the Sonic CD, you'll actually get this screen that just has a bunch of Majin Sonics plastered over the screen. And that's actually what the death scene is based off in the Friday Night Funkin' mod where you're facing Majin Sonic and lose. Next up on our list, we're gonna go ahead and talk about Sunky Doc MPEG. And I really love this Sonic because he's basically a parody of Sonics.exe. And the only way that he appears is in a hidden song called Milk. And even though Sunky is kind of derpy looking, in my opinion, I think he's actually kind of cute. And I really like Sunky because it's been confirmed that he is the only version of Sonics.exe that actually means you no harm. As weird as it is, all Sunky really wants to do is dance, party, and feed you milk, which is a reference to Sunky's parody creepypasta called Sally.exe, in which basically he feeds people milk instead of murdering them. And since Sunky is kind of a joke character, his songs actually reflect that because they have a lot of references to other songs. For example, like Can I Put My Balls In Your Jaws, Shorty Like A Melody In My Head, Best Day Ever, and Endless. Now for those of you who are curious at how you unlock the song Milk, all you have to do is go to the title page and press up, down, left, right. And this was a reference to how you can actually get to the level select screen in the old school classic Sonic games. Next on our list, we're going to talk about Sonic.exe, and he is a character that was based off a meme in the MLG community. Sonic was created by a YouTuber called Onyx Heart back in 2010 when they made a video called How to Draw Sonic Hedgehog. It literally showed the creator drawing Sonic in this Microsoft Paint drawing software with music from the Green Hill Zone blasting in the background. Now, even though Sonic is definitely a meme, he's actually very popular in the Sonic community. He has appeared in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie when the crazy theorist shows a drawing of Sonic to try to prove that Sonic is actually real. And he also has his own game called Sonic Ball. If Sonic's background looks familiar to you, it's because it's actually from Gary's mod. The map is actually called GM Flatgrass. Next up on our list is going to be Fleetway Supersonic, and I think this is one of the most underrated versions of Sonic in the Sonic.exe mod. And I think that's mostly due to the fact that a lot of people don't know this Sonic because he's very old, making his first appearance in the Sonic comic back in 1993. This version of Super Sonic is very interesting because this is not the heroic type of shiver of Super Sonic that you're used to seeing in the cartoons. This is the original Super Sonic who was actually bloodthirsty and a little bit crazy. He was the result of Sonic coming into too much contact with Chaos Emerald energy and all that chaotic energy basically made a separate version of Sonic, which is Fleetway Super Sonic. So whenever Sonic was to get too angry or get too stressed, Super Sonic would come out and basically wreak havoc, and Sonic would have no idea what he was doing because he technically wasn't in control. It was very much like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type situation. Now, even though a lot of people in the Friday Night Funkin' community are not familiar with Super Sonic, he, Tails Doll, and Magic Sonic are actually the only characters in this mod that originated from the official Sonic series. And he specifically is the only character in this mod that isn't based off some type of Sonic creepypasta, because of course he's actually from the Sonic comics. The next character we're going to speak about is going to be the actual Sonics.exe, and he is definitely the most well-known EXE character. Most of you probably know Sonics.exe from the creepypasta, which also got turned into a video game. You may actually remember watching Markiplier play it back in the day. I know that was the first time that I was introduced to it. <laughs> Don't run! Ah! 
there's also been a ton of animations featuring Sonics.exe that clearly show his demonic personality. Now, many people believe that Sonics.exe is a demon that is actually possessing Sonic, but that's not technically true. EXE is a completely different entity that is more similar to Fleetway Supersonic as opposed to the actual Sonic. I say this because just like Fleetway Supersonic, EXE is completely obsessed with Sonic and also obsessed with unaliving characters and animals alike. Something that is unique about Sonics.exe is that he just wants to kill for pleasure though. It's not like he's killing because he wants to replace Sonic or because anybody has done any wrong to him. It's simply based off his whims. You may have also noticed that Sonics.exe changes his form in this mod. In this version of Sonic, it's called Xenophanes, and some of you may know it as Beast Sonic because in previous mods, that's how he was referred to and he even had like a beast-like form. Now, this version of Sonic is one of the most aesthetically pleasing versions of Sonic.exe in my opinion. We literally get to see him sprout additional quills on his body that turn lavender. I always like the joke that he looks like a hedgehog trying to turn Super Saiyan. And one thing that I find kind of awesome but creepy is that you can actually see his face start to stretch. And in turn, you can actually see pieces of his skull around his eye sockets. Now, people are always curious as to why Tails, Knuckles, and Dr. Robotnik are all zombified and have pieces of their bodies ripped apart. And to understand that, you have to understand the actual Sonic.exe creepypasta. Basically, the creepypasta takes place like this. There is a character named Tom who received a copy of this video game from his friend Kyle. His buddy Kyle told him to get rid of the game because he couldn't do it himself and to not play it. But since Tom was such a huge Sonic fan, he of course disregarded his friend's advice and booted up the game anyway. Now Tom noticed something strange from the very start. The background screen was like this red cloudy image that was super weird and ominous and also the three playable characters are Tails, Knuckles, and Dr. Robotnik, which usually that third character would be Sonic, which was another red flag that Tom completely ignored. And it became very clear after playing with each character and going through their storyline that Sonics.exe was simply chasing these characters down and killing them. What makes it even more creepy though is that each of these storylines were attached to some type of game as if Sonics.exe thought that they were playthings. We see this start out with Tails, where Sonic tells them that they're going to play hide and go seek, which basically just turns into Sonic chasing you down, and we assume lunging at you because the screen cuts out then, and all you hear is this god awful scream. <laughs> We see this continue with each character going over next to Knuckles where he puts a rule on Knuckles saying you can't run. And then we see that Sonics plays this weird game of tag with Knuckles where he keeps disappearing whenever Knuckles gets close enough to touch him. And the game ends with you playing as Dr. Robotnik where you're in this Castlevania-like castle and you are basically running through until Sonic finds you and kills you. Now, I explained the creepypasta and why these characters are dead, but that doesn't explain why they are alive and well in this Friday Night Funkin' universe battling boyfriend. And the answer to this is actually really simple. It's because Sonics.exe uses his power to bring these characters back to life and force them to do his bidding. And this relates back to a quote that Tom said in the actual creepypasta that reads like this. This Sonic was a monster. A pure, evil, sadistic, all-powerful, nightmarish, demented monster. And all his victims, including Tails, Knuckles, Robotnik, and possibly Kyle, are just his little toys. And the game is the very gateway into his chaotic, nightmarish world and the very hell his victims are trapped in. So ultimately, the reason that Sonics.exe has so much power here and is able to bring these characters back to life is because boyfriend and girlfriend actually stepped into his realm, that being the video game realm. And in this universe, Sonics.exe is basically a god, like he tells us in the creepypasta. And this explains why he rips all these characters up and basically leaves them mangled zombies. Since he thinks so highly of himself, it also means that he doesn't think very highly of these other characters, meaning that tearing them apart doesn't really affect him and he doesn't really care. The next character that we're going to talk about is going to be the Fatal Error Sonic. Now funny enough, Fatal Error is a sentient AI that was actually created by another AI. The difference with Fatal Error though is that he actually questions his existence and the purpose of his creation. Fatal Error was so dangerous that his creator basically sent him out to gather code one day and basically blocked him from coming back. So Fatal Error was basically cast out into the cyberverse where he ended up finding himself in a random PC. Now on this PC, he noticed that Sonic 3 and the Knuckle ROM was actually on this computer. 
and initially he was just going to consume the code and be done but he started to get a little spark of inspiration he decided to have fun with the characters in this game he started with sonic basically chasing him through the launch base getting his blood rushing and once he actually captured him he ripped off sonic's arms and he entered his torso and this is why in the mod we see that fatal air is actually taking over sonic's body and why he has those extra pairs of arms it's because his true form obviously isn't Sonic the Hedgehog and he's kind of using him like a suit. Next on our list, I want to talk about Tails Doll because this character is significantly more creepy than people actually know. Now, most people probably recognize Tails Doll from the Sonic Racing game where he was basically built by Dr. Robotnik in order to take down the real Miles, aka the real Tails. Now, the creepy pasta versions of Tails Doll is much, much darker because it's basically just a serial killer. Tails Doll will kill anybody, it doesn't matter if it's a kid or an adult if they perform the Tails Doll curse. Now the details of this curse varies between different creepypastas, but one of my favorite stories basically goes like this. If a person plays a song from Sonic Racing in the dark, that's when Tails Doll will actually come out and he'll kill anybody in the vicinity. Tails Doll is very much like Sonic.exe. That's why in a lot of fan art, you'll see the two of them actually standing side by side because they are both homicidal maniacs. The next character on our list is going to be Needle Mouse, and she actually has a very interesting backstory. Now, from what we know about her, she was actually considered to be human at one time, and her name was Sarah. Now, Sarah had a small group of friends who were so close that they considered themselves to be family. Unfortunately, one night this group of friends were drinking and they accidentally got into a drunken brawl. It seems that Sarah's friends hurt her very, very badly, so they decided to dig a ditch and throw her body in it. Now, while Sarah was definitely unalive in this ditch, her spirit was still very, very much alive and she was angry and that anger was just growing and growing over time. And this basically turned her into a vengeful spirit. Years later, Sega Corp actually came to that area and built a building right over her ditch, AKA her grave. And as the Sega Corporation was creating games, Sarah basically imprinted her spirit onto one of those game discs. And as this game was being sold and passed between different people, Sarah was able to come back into the world and actually hunt down her friends. Now, a couple of fun facts about Needle Mouth is that she's one of the few examples of a female EXE. When she was alive, she was actually a young Asian woman and her birthday was on 420, AKA April 20th. So I know some of you stoners might get a kick out of that. The last character that we see in the mod is called Cold Steel, which is short for Cold Steel the Hedgehog. And he's basically a fan-made character from the Sonic the Hedgehog universe. And now this character is basically kind of like a meme. He's supposed to be the stereotype of like the edgy teenager. I find it kind of funny though that in his lore, apparently he was able to fight against Sonic because he ends up falling victim to the darkness and turning evil. And as you notice in his sprite, he actually is missing a part of his ear and that's because he actually lost that in the fight with Sonic the Hedgehog. If you enjoyed this video, check out this video where I fully cover the Mistful Crimson Morning mod, or check out this video where I explain the Cuphead.exe mod. Thanks for watching. This is Orsa Course. Peace, peace.